Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to the Free to Play Cast brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free to play related. I'm your host, Mike Byrne, aka Magic Man, and this is episode 340. We're recording on May 14th. You're watching it on the 15th or later. And we've got some predictions that even we would have gotten right if we had felt so inclined to make them. A little segment we're going to call Uh Oh and Oh No. And then some things that maybe you should just check out here in the coming weeks in the free-to-play world. Joining me to go over all of it, you know him, you love him, you want more of him, Mr. Jason Winter. How are you, sir? Uh, you know, I, I actually, unlike many people here, I learned how to type an S when I was learning how to type. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and pre-show chat strikes again, throwing the barbs at Quitlin Bowers. Miss Q, what's up? Bite me, Jason. <laughs> okay. that, that, that's about right. <laughs> oh my so how was everybody's week everybody okay everybody still healthy enjoying the whole quarantine thing <laughs> again people ask me that like jason how are you handling all this i'm like no different than i pretty much ever have <laughs> so in the basement i write for a website and i hardly ever see people so you know <laughs> every now and then i toss a t-shirt over my head when i have to go out for groceries but that's about it <laughs> q you've got a new angle here because of a new desk huh Yes, I, ha I finally have a new desk and, and a new cat tree. I see that. A lovely cat tree. Do you have new cats? <laughs> no, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gang, we're glad you've decided to join us to watch this show, so let's slide over and get started with the news. All right, what do we got today? Well, we've got a couple of uh, fun things to start out with here. These are predictions we probably could have made ourselves. Who knew that having everybody at home... Many of us not able to work and having nothing to do would lead to steady or increased profits for gaming companies. I'm that is just staggering. I I am stunned by this. We've got financials for both Nexon and NCSoft. They usually come in at the same time. Now, granted, little disclaimer, these are quarter one. So as far as the whole COVID-19 quarantining stuff goes. This would just be like one of those three months really impacted in most areas of the world. Some areas were already doing some stuff in February, but since it's a January, February, March area uh, of the year, really March would have been the big COVID impact that you would expect. So it'll also be interesting to see where these land in quarter two, but again, I probably would feel safe predicting that they will hold steady or even rise just based on the number of users sitting around and trying to find something to do. Let's start off with Nexon first because we know, Jason, that Nexon is actually getting rid of a game later this month uh, in Maple Story 2. So maybe it would have been easy to say, I wonder if Nexon's struggle going to struggle a little bit uh, this quarter and in quarter two. That was just not the case. I would assume that Maple Story 2 is relevant to them still at this point. So, right. <laughs> yeah, losing it is not going to really affect them in pretty much any way. But they did they did acknowledge they had a record-breaking quarter in Korea for, for the Q1. Which, again, the Korea, first of all, South Korea, one of the best countries at handling all the, the whole situation and so on. Though, So they were a little less affected than, from, than everyone else. But still, they still had a really good uh, quarter in, uh, in, in the first quarter which was included 78% year-over-year increase from Q1 2019. So they brought in almost double the money that they brought in from Q1 a year ago. So It is really wild wow. to see that China and Korea are like 80-88% of their revenues. I mean, that's how they've always been. I mean, that they, is, they only it's... barely... It's staggering. And you, when you think of that other 12%, though, that is not just, oh, that's the West. No, that's everybody else. <laughs> that's <laughs> Japan, North America, Europe, everywhere, primarily driven by MapleStory Mobile in Japan and PC's MapleStory, the original MapleStory, still driving most of that 12% everywhere else. It's funny, a combination of old titles asking. and everywhere. Go ahead. One guy on your stream asking, people still play EverQuest 1 and 2? Like, Wait till we tell you about MapleStory. Yeah, let's, let's, let's tell you about MapleStory. <laughs> yeah, no Q kidding. Yeah, one... Go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, yeah, it still is, does really well. Yeah. 
Q, one thing that I did think was interesting from the investor presentation, which I don't know if I would have predicted, seeing a lot of other companies have problems with this, uh, one of the primary bullet points was that game development is on track with no major disruption from COVID-19. Now, Jason kind of alluded to the fact that most of this happens in South Korea. They manage their, their COVID situation, their coronavirus situation, uh, pretty effectively, at least so far. Uh, according to most people's analysis. So it's kind of interesting to see that they're saying, hey, most of our development, no big impact. When all these other companies are delay, cancellation, move to next year, you're seeing a lot of that across the board. Apparently not the case for Nexon. One of the differences is, at least as far as delays go, is the whole voice acting thing for a lot of companies, right? Like, some of them are just straight up delaying stuff because they can't get the voice actors in to yeah. do stuff. And other ones are like, well, we'll release it, but we'll just have to add the voices later. And you guys will just have to make do with, oh my God, text for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you might actually have to read in your game. No. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I, I think that that is part of it. Uh, there, There is the whole thing of like, obviously, you know, South Korea did, they just kind of jumped on the whole thing and, and started shifting everything pretty much right away. And some other countries just kind of dicked around with a lot of it. And mm. <laughs> I don't know what countries those would be, No, but, you know, just kind of dicked around with a lot of it and stuff. And we, and, and then it was like, at that point, it was like, well, we just kind of have to shuffle everybody out, and, you know, and, instead of handling it effectively so i think it's a combination of both but yeah from what i've seen from at least american canadian developers is um a lot of it has to do with just not having being able to work with the voice actors because that's a little trickier yeah and guild wars 2 one of the games you're referencing there that's decided they're going to do it without voice acting uh, and then go back and fill it in later star wars the old republic opting to delay things because of voice acting and and we'll release at later dates. Uh, then you have what is what what are they developing, right? I mean that's the next question, Jason. If development mm -hmm. is on track, development for what? Well, they've got a, a bunch of stuff in the pipeline. We've already seen Cart Rider Drift. We just put news up today that that's going to move into its next closed beta phase. Then it's got the mobile version or the mobile you know. Uh, tie-in uh cart rider rush plus that's coming uh they've got their fifa they're also involved in the final fantasy 11 mobile which i know a lot of people are looking forward to i have a bit of skepticism towards that being a huge final fantasy 11 fan and how that will pan out but we will see dynasty warriors 9 mabinogi so there's a lot of upcoming titles Mainly on the mobile side, Jason. Mainly on the mobile side. So you could make the argument, well, yeah, I mean, their development really shouldn't be impacted all that much because their development slate is predominantly smaller titles that aren't going to have heavy voice acting, aren't going to have, mm -hmm. you know, huge development teams behind as well. So it kind of makes sense from that perspective, too. Yeah, and it's a little surprising, too, when I was looking through this and seeing that still, like, 80% of their revenue comes from PC gaming. So yeah. despite the despite all we've seen from mobile, you know, through the past few years, which we're going to find out in a little bit here, uh, they still are very, very keyed in on PC. Not a lot of that is MapleStory having a lot to do with that, but you know, MapleStory M came out and did all right in Japan. Although Japan, as we mentioned, is part of that twelve percent, which is virtually nothing. But yeah, they're. They're not as big into mobile as a lot of other companies are, but I think that's going to change over the next uh, couple of years. On the PC side, though, we do have, like I, I mentioned, Cart Rider Drift, but we also have one you're looking forward to, what whatever the hell Embark Studios is making. Yeah, yeah Patrick Soderlund's company, which they acquired you know, last year or maybe the year before, I don't remember. But yeah, that they, they've said all sorts of things about how they're going to be innovative and produce a new platform and this and that, so... Everybody. Yeah, I mean, I, on the one hand, I am excited. I am kind of interested in to see how it is, but I'm also a little skeptical. Like, they're, they're promising the moon, practically. So so Jason is not, we'll say Jason is not excited. Jason he's, is guarded. He's mildly intrigued. He's guarded. Yeah. He's yeah. mildly intrigued. Uh, on the flip side of this coin, let's go to NCSoft. Uh, and I only say flip side because these two companies basically release their financials on the same day most quarters every single year. Uh, not because they were down, because guess what? They weren't. 
and Lineage 2 mobile, those sales are really just paving the way for the best quarter ever for this mega giant company, Jason. Well, let me bring up my spreadsheet here just to see if you have an idea of how absolutely crazy Lineage 2M was. So the, the number it brought in was five, what's it? Yeah. 341 billion Korean won, basically. Basically. That would be. Yeah, go ahead. That would be like a greater quarter than they had, just from that one game, a greater quarter than they had in all but four of their previous quarters ever. Or yeah. three of their previous quarters ever. And that's from one game. And that title accounts for about half of the total income. Yeah, it was like 45% or something like that was how much it was of their total revenue for the quarter. So, oh, yeah, that, that did really well. That, that seems to be doing really popular. And again, we talk about how, hey, you know, people are staying at home. Now, although I would have thought that maybe PC games would do a little better because people aren't as much, you know, yeah. going to work and you know, sitting yeah. on trains or whatever. But I guess still mobile they still just want to play that now to be you know devil's advocate here we did see lineage mobile do this same thing huge spike and then kind mm -hmm. of a really bad down and then a plateau maybe we'll see the same thing with lineage 2m i don't know i would think that yeah we're gonna see a huge spike because it, it follows the same thing that does everywhere q right sure new release boom bunch of people taper down and it's that taper down that you watch like how badly and how fast do we taper down and that's what i think they're going to be looking here at, at lineage 2 mobile over the second quarter that is just one of those things that it generally doesn't stay as high as it is at launch because there's that whole curiosity factor but the other thing too as far as like the people staying home and whatever it uh, i mean yeah most people have a pc sitting around their house but unless you're actually a gamer, your your computer isn't necessarily geared towards that kind of thing. Whereas mobile gaming, right? Everybody's got a freaking phone sitting around somewhere that they can that they can pick up and play something on, and it doesn't take them any effort to get into it. So at this point, where you do have a lot of people who may not normally be interested in games um, sitting around with nothing to do, and they decide to do something, they're pro I, I would almost think that they would lean more towards that yeah like the guy at blizzard said you, you guys all have phones right <laughs> i mean it, it's it's not wrong who was that <laughs> i don't even remember <laughs> oh my yeah we we haven't even seen that what that yet what diablo um immortal diablo was it immortal? I don't, yeah i think so uh, I uh, no immortal was the four i don't even remember whatever diablo something yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Diablo Immortal. Okay. Yeah. We we still have, we we haven't seen that yet, have we? That's that's upcoming. Yeah, still upcoming. Oh uh, boy. Good old Blizz. Anyway, back to NCSoft. Uh differing from Nexon here quite a bit in that almost all of their money came from mobile. Uh the PC gaming side of NCSoft accounted for about a fifth of the revenue that the mobile segment did. Now, again, Lineage 2M, new product, spike the number. Maybe that'll, those, that ratio will come down a little bit and more back to normal. Does that concern you, Jason? Like, if you are in NCSoft's board, do you kind of start thinking, hey, maybe it doesn't pay to have these big, large, multi-million dollar... Uh, projects and granted all of theirs are you know well established and don't really have to sink a ton of money into there's nothing new on the board here but they do cost money to run they do cost money to expand you know blade and soul still getting new content guild wars 2 we know is getting an expansion maybe not so much going on with lineage lineage 2 and and ion to a certain degree ion changes some things up here but there is still money do you think that this kind of Revenue split, though, makes them go, well, let's see. We could do two mobile titles next quarter, or we could start development on our next large-scale AAA PC thing. Hey, uh, no, let's just go mobile. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they got to be thinking. I, mean, that, <laughs> I, I don't think there's any question about that. The, the, the notion that you'd see a big, a big AAA caliber MMORPG from them in the future is pretty slim. Right. And like, you, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, you can't even argue with them. Like, as much as I want them to be on PC and be bigger scale, I, I can't say, well, oh, you made 80 what percent of you? Well, yeah, that's you should make a PC game. 
<laughs> I mean, even look at the chart. You look at the chart for the past like five quarters, and it shows lineage M versus lineage two M. Lineage M has been pretty steady around the two hundred thousand mark. So it's been around two hundred thousand, whereas all of their PC games combined have been like the hundred to one hundred twenty thousand range. So just lineage M, which have been pretty steady now for the for the past year plus, makes nearly twice as much as all of their PC games. So it's like, why would you not do that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, here's, keep here's developing the, and keep doing expansions for the PC stuff, but you're not making anything new. I yeah, don't I, I don't think they're making anything new. No, no. Uh, there's, which is sad, which is sad. But uh, Q, of a little concern to you, uh, let me ask you this, uh, or do you think it's funny more than concerning? Guild Wars Two gonna get an expansion later this year. We've been streaming that on our. Uh, Streams Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern on uh, twitch.tv slash MMOBomb. Jason did some post-80 gameplay yesterday. I did some more Necromancer leveling today. So we're doing a bunch of free-to-play games, and you're, we're open to recommendations. If you show up on stream, let us know what you want to see. We'll be happy to, to give it a shot. We even put Lineage 2 on there for a day, and that was a brutal day. Uh, we even played <laughs> Valorant last week. We did play Valorant last week. That was not as brutal as Lineage 2, but <laughs> almost as brutal. Uh, I want to take a second here, Q, to ask your opinion, because looking at the last uh, five quarters, including this, this Q1 2020, Guild Wars 2 just barely edges out Ion in, in these quarters. Um, with the exception of maybe Q1 2019, where they had a little bit more of a lead than they had for the last... Does that concern you when you start talking about games that are getting expansions as a, you know, as a development company? Guild Wars is getting an expansion later this year. Ion hasn't seen an expansion in <laughs> who knows how long. And what does that say about the future, potential future of Guild Wars 2? I mean, I haven't really spent any time in Guild Wars 2, so I don't know, you know, like what the player base or, or, or anything like that does. But I monetarily, it does seem weird. And I mean, with Ion, right, it's not just that they it hasn't had an expansion. They basically like pulled back on it. When yeah. Their, their update was to go in and take out a whole bunch of stuff yeah. and rearrange things. And they took like, out some dungeons and... <laughs> How, what they, really? They, yeah, they oh yeah. Took out content as no, part no, of their update. They took out. They took out dungeons. They took out entire zones, like a couple of city areas. Like the first one of the first big city areas is gone. I did not know this. Wow. Yeah, and they basically made it to where it's just like you spend what two days and you're max level, and you, then you just go PvP all the time. Like this well, is that's Ion. an improvement, but yeah. This is the, the, this is life in Ion. They took out uh, crafting and the ability to sell your wares. Like they just they took out. That's all they did. They took out. They moved some things and they took out things and changed the story a little bit. Hmm. So it's it's a little weird to me that with two games being that close for the same company, they they're like, okay, well we'll just reduce this game and expand this game, but. I don't know, maybe they know something that we don't, and an expansion will actually work for Guild Wars 2, where it apparently was not working for Ion, although I don't remember when the last time they did an expansion for Ion before that was, so... Right. Although, Jason, historically, looking at the financials here, every time Guild Wars 2 does an expansion, not only do they predictably have a very good quarter for the release of that expansion, but they tend to boost their numbers overall for the next two or th even three quarters granted not to the extent that they do on launch quarter but they do maintain some of that momentum for a good two to three quarters after the initial quarter release and maybe that's what ncsoft is is looking for you said it in the piece kind of that more we may not develop new pc stuff but our pc stuff is stable reliable income we can Good release I was going to say, Guild Wars 2 has actually been very stable since the last expansion. It came down a little bit, obviously, from the post-expansion, but it was still pretty much what it had been in the years prior, you know, between expansions, until these last two quarters. If you look at that chart, it's like, you know, 15,000, 16, 15, whatever, and then there's just 11 and 12 the last two. So it just kind of, kind of cratered these last two quarters, which I'm not totally sure what the reasoning for that is, but... Yeah, I mean, it'll probably do the same thing, but the question is then, will what will it go back down to after those first few months of... of trailed off is it going to go back to this 11 12 thing or is it going to go back to the 15 16 so yeah that could make a pretty big difference yep 
So, I mean, no surprises there. I would have expected companies like this to stay on par or even do a little better during something like what's going on in the world now. So, predictions we probably could have safely made. Here's a prediction that anybody could have made, but for some reason, it's news. Uh, Fortnite, your favorite battle royale game, will make its way. Settle down. Don't be worried. It will make its way to next generation consoles. I know some oh. of us were worried that it might not. I was sure they weren't going to put it on the PS5. I mean, I don't know why they would. <laughs> right? Oh. I, why this had to be like an actual announcement, I don't know. Like, if it would have been Q more of a, hey, we're going to be there at launch, or hey, we're going to be there three months after launch, or okay, then maybe I would have been like, oh, that's that's kind of, yeah, that's surprising. It's going to be a launch title. I didn't know if it would be ready. That's cool. No, the announcement was just, don't worry. Yeah, it'll be there. I, uh, I don't think anybody in their right mind thought you weren't going to take the biggest money-making battle royale on the planet and kill it with the current generation of consoles. Well, I mean, they did add some other information that people might actually be somewhat interested in like is it going to still be available on this gen's consoles and the answer is yes and will progression carry over which is kind of a big deal right you've spent all that money already mm -hmm. and again the answer is yes so even if you don't want to buy the, a brand new console right away you're still good and when you do buy the brand new console you'll be able to take all your shit with you so that's like the two important things that i got out of it the rest of it was like i wasn't really surprised that it was going to be on any platform because it's on every platform. Was anybody worried about that? <laughs> like, oh my God, I'm not going to buy a PS5 because Fortnite won't be on it. Of course Fortnite's going to be on it. Actually, I'd be more likely to buy PS5 if Fortnite wasn't going to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> you jaded son of a bitch. All right. So yeah, there you go. A little bit of info. You will get your cross progression and save your account stuff. Uh, but there you go. All right, let's uh, let's jump to a little segment that I have labeled "Uh oh" and "Oh no," and I'll let you decide which companies are saying which as we go through these. Uh, so first up, speaking, we talked a little bit about Guild Wars Two earlier. This did not impact Jason and I being on uh, North American servers. But the European servers have not been having the greatest of times lately, Jason. No, no. Uh, usually Guild Wars 2 is a pretty stable game. They don't usually have major server issues. In fact, uh, something they touted for years is that they don't even go down when they have like updates. You said that thing that pops up that says, you know, the, you have to log out in the next two hours or whatever because we're going to do something. So pretty good on that front. But this weekend uh, over uh, on the European servers, it was kind of ugly. Yeah. Um, players apparently... I'm not, not, I'm not sure about the reports exactly about how much progress they lost based on what we heard early and what ArenaNet has officially said. Yeah, the but initial the weekend, reports were a three-day yeah. loss due yeah. to a database crash issue and a restoration from a backup on a three-day loss. Then later, uh, like Tuesday, Monday into Tuesday, we were hearing from ArenaNet that they were able to restore it back to basically Monday. So a partial to a full day loss with them still working on restoring some additional items to other people. Yeah. So things went down, they came back up, they went down again and now they seem to be back up for good. And as you, as you mentioned, they announced their compensation plans today, which includes a, which includes a, a free mount. If you were in there, if you were in the game during the time frame that they were having the biggest issues, like during Monday, uh, Monday afternoon. Damn it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a funny thing, too. Like, and I'm hearing people complain about this. I'm hearing some people say, oh, you're so entitled. Why do you want this stuff? But I kind of get the point some people are making, which is to say, I was responsible. I didn't log in during this period because I didn't want to you know, put more crap on the server and didn't want to you know, be affected by it. And I'm not getting into a free mount because you know, I was a good person. Clearly, I should have logged in, made the situation worse, and then gotten my free mount. So I, I, I kind of see the logic behind that, at least. So... I feel like maybe they should have extended that to anybody like who logged in over the weekend, but and North uh, American uh, players that are level forty-two necromancers. Well, that I don't have an issue. That with, they know. should they should extend it to the the forty-two necromancers on the NA servers. <laughs> just the forty-two. Just but the forty-two. You weren't 42. forty-two when the you weren't forty-two when the stuff went down. So All right, you just the thirty-one necromancers. Uh, sure, <laughs> good, sure, good sure. point, Jason. Good point. Uh, on the compensation front here, or uh, on the additional information here that you do need to know if you were impacted by this, if you bought anything with gems, 
during that that whole time those should those purchases should be restored in the next few days but if you sent anything through the mail or put it in your bank you're gonna have to do that again and if by chance you got some rare or super valuable item maybe a precursor you're encouraged to actually contact support to see about the possibility the possibility of a replacement. Yeah, I got like eight precursors during that. Time. Yeah, exactly. Uh... It's like Q is like, <laughs> oh, I rolled a character and I had gotten fourteen precursors. <laughs> Q, it doesn't work that way. On the, on the EU server. On yeah, the yeah, EU was, server. Yeah. <laughs> Q, just tell me you have friends over there. That's that's all. I play there because I have friends over there. I have an account on the EU servers that I did for our first look video. So, we'll see. Maybe. Yeah, there, there you go. You're impacted. I since we did the first look video. <laughs> You're impacted. Four years ago. Um, the, moving on here. So we'll let you decide if that's uh oh or oh no. Maybe both. Depends on perspective. Um, also, in here, we're going to talk about Darwin Project. That is uh, no more. And I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere. It's, uh, it's, it's more. It's just less. Yeah, it's more, but <laughs> less. It's a. Addition by subtraction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you don't remember this, that's you know you'd be forgiven. This was a battle royale with a kind of a game show feeling to it, similar to a topic we're going to talk about next, uh, <laughs> as far as that that type of battle royale presentation. Uh, this was available on PC. We looked at it there, then we checked it out on PS4 too. I, I think I did the first look for yeah, it. Yeah, you did. Um, and I actually thought it was kind of neat, but here's the thing. I, like a lot of players of the game, um, liked what they did in beta and then hated what they did when they released it uh, because they switched and, and put, like, basically classes in the game. I mean, they made changes that just didn't work for me. I thought it was a more interesting game before those changes. A lot of people shared that opinion uh, when it happened, and apparently... That has not changed. The free-to-play transition, the release on the PlayStation 4, has not changed anything. And the team has decided, we're going to leave the game on for the rest of the year, but it's maintenance mode until then, and we'll shut down at that point. To quote them, they were unable to sustain, it's unable to sustain itself. We have assessed all potential solutions and scenarios, but unfortunately, Darwin Project is unable to sustain itself, thus forcing us to come to this very difficult decision. We're still very proud to see what had started as a scribble on a piece of paper become a fully realized game that has reached millions of players. Okay, despite the fact that I would probably challenge that number. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am a little sad to see this one go, just because I did think it was a little unique. Um, but Survival of the Fittest, Darwin Project, this wasn't going to make it, particularly after the changes queue. So I can't say I'm surprised. I mean, honestly, I had more or less forgotten about it when Jason linked it in chat. I was like, oh, wait, I think I remember that title. And then it took me a few minutes to realize it was the game show Battle Royale. Yeah. And that's literally all I knew about it. It was the game show Battle Royale. So, and and I hadn't, I mean, we obviously haven't heard much about it in, in a while because I, I don't remember when the last time we wrote something about it was, but yeah, probably it was when I like earlier this year, the right? first the first look. <laughs> remember, I told you that I told you that like in February we talked about they we wrote the, they wrote their roadmap for 2020. Yeah. Uh, this oh, wasn't yeah. on it. Um. <laughs> no, this is not a part of the roadmap. This is like this is like a road leading off the cliff. <laughs> so, sometimes I just got to say that I absolutely love our viewers. Comments on this piece already just got posted today. Uh, comments on this one. All Wind says, it's just another Battle Royale fad. I think the developers should have expected a similar scenario when they were still picking a theme for their game. Battle Royales are fads that die out in a year or so. Instead, create a traditional shooter with game modes like Search and Destroy, Team Deathmatch, and the game will have a lot bigger chance to survive. Okay, maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Then you followed it up with Hades' comment. <laughs> and that's it. That's the whole comment. <laughs> You gotta love our viewers sometimes <laughs> that just chime in with the absolute sarcastic laugh. I love it. I love it. Sad to see it go, but if you uh, if you enjoyed it still after they changed the whole classes stuff, you'll be able to play it for seven more months. Six and a half more months. So enjoy. At least. Enjoy. At least. Yeah, enjoy. 
Uh, last one in this segment, The Calling. Speaking of Battle Royale games with a game show type presentation, this game has come and gone, I don't know, what, seven times now, Q? <laughs> Something I, like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's been released and then was updated into a point that people didn't like it anymore, so then it went away, but then it came back as the original version before all the updates that people didn't like, but then it went away because not enough people wanted to play it at that, that time. It is coming back to the Xbox One. However, it will not be free to play now because I guess free to play was too profitable. I don't know. I don't know. There is absolutely no reason this should not be free to play. I have a theory, which I will share with you two in a moment, but it won't be free to play. It will be buy to play at five ninety nine. Now, Q, that's not bad, right? If you, it's, it's the Calling Origin. So if you like the original version before they made some combat changes way back when, six bucks, you got it, right? That's not a bad deal. Or a game that you were already playing for free. Oh, all right. I mean, oh, but if you if you had it for free, you'll still get it for free, right? I mentioned that, so right. there's even that. And who else are they going to lure into this? Okay, fair point. Fair point. Um, here's the thing that's really odd. This is not just pay five ninety nine for this game. You're going to pay five ninety nine for the game, assuming you're new. And it's Xbox One only, by the way. It's, you're not going to find it on Steam or anything, at least not yet. And that's going to get you, Jason, wait for it, one match per day. Cool. What if I want to play more than one match, Mike? I'll tell you. Well, first, you have a couple options, Jason. You could just... Oh, I like options. Yeah, you could just get good. Because if you <laughs> if you win, you'll get a token that you can use to play another match. Now I forget how many people are put into a culling match at any given time. I don't, sixteen, I, I believe. Is I the, thought it was like usual. twelve was in my head, but let's okay. Let's say it's sixteen. That means sixteen people enter. One of you has a chance of getting a token for another free match. Fifteen of you are asked out and done for the day. I think they have teams too. I think you can do, you can do with two te eight teams yeah. of two. So yeah. maybe two of you get maybe get, two of you. Uh, but let's say you don't want to get good. You like coming in fourth, and you're okay yeah, with that. Keyboard, how work? <laughs> I do have options for you, Q. Here you go, Q. You, I, you can take your choice. You can buy individual tokens themselves, either three for ninety nine cents, ten for three bucks, or twenty for five bucks, and you can use those tokens one token for a match, or. I'm going to let you buy an all-access pass for seven days at $2 or 30 days at another $5.99. So let's think about this. They took a free-to-play game, made it buy-to-play for $5.99, then gave you ridiculous free-to-play, horrible free-to-play monetization options in a buy-to-play game. <clears throat> They're basically selling you a season pass of content not a season pass of cosmetic shit that you can win like destiny or fortnite or fantasy star online 2 or anything like that we're gonna sell you a season pass of the fucking game you can't <laughs> you can't play the game without buying these little tokens or season pass unless you're somebody that could just consistently win one match after one match after one match uh <laughs> in the press release the company xavian said that it shifted their monetization approach to ensure that players will be able to visit the island for years to come i this is so confusing to me q because this almost says don't come to my island <laughs> I don't you even know, have permits. You didn't talk about it. It's weird. What it reminds me of is public is the public transit pricing system. <laughs> <laughs> if you beat someone what? up on the train, do you get a free free pass, free token? Uh, well, well, you're well, not, you're gonna get a free not. ride. You're gonna get a free ride at that point. Your destination might have changed, and you might be in the back seat of the car, but you're gonna get another ride. Go ahead, Q. But it, 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 it does. It's like you start out, you buy your, your card, right, for, for, the, for the public transit, and that's a specific cost. And then, you, and then you have the choices 
of paying for a single ride at a time or five rides at a time or a whole month's worth of rides. My God, you're right. Like, it's mm. like it's like public transit. You are absolutely <laughs> right. Mm. And, and I wonder if that's what they were looking at when they decided this, because I mean, first of all, the the first three options, like Okay, I get the idea that when you're super poor, you end up paying a lot more for something because you do buy the cheapest thing at a time. But we're talking like 99 cents versus six bucks. And do they really think that anybody's going to go in for any of those lower prices? Will they, will they make a whole bunch of money off off of yeah, those individual? Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's one of those things where like... You you look at the pricing, Jason. You're like, well, for twenty for four ninety nine, I could buy twenty matches. Oh, I might as well just give them five ninety nine and have get the un- month. Yeah. yeah, it's so so sleazy. And here's the thing: not only is the model sleazy as all get out, this is a terrible model. And if anybody actually buys into this to the point where this thing can survive then we're in a whole lot of trouble as far as video game monetization goes from that point on. This game isn't good enough to warrant <laughs> even trying a new payment model of some type. Like, I would be... I would still bash the model, but if this was a bigger game that I was like, okay, maybe they're trying things out. You're like, we're not going to put loot boxes in. What if we do this instead? Or what? That I'd still bash it. It's a terrible fucking model. But it's not this, even that the game. It's not even that the game is very is good or bad or whatever. Yeah. The company has like no, no uh, credence. Has no cred- credibility. Cred- yeah. Remember they 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 abandoned the calling to make the calling too, and everybody hated that. Yep. And like A- two after, days later, they came out yeah. after they fucked up the calling by yeah, putting in battle changes and. And then two days later, they said, "Well, okay, we're sorry. We didn't mean to make calling two. We'll go." They got the worst. Like, they got the calling two. What? What? It's still on Steam. Hang on a sec. It has, hold on, wait for it, a 16% positive rating on the Culling 2. That's how much they got raked over the coals for that. And oh now, I, I was I was at least sort of nice in my article, but then I found other headlines about this. Oh, yeah. And Oh, my God. The article, some of the headlines, the Culling is making an unexpected return with a baffling business model. All right. That's kind of giving them the benefit of the doubt. I don't understand this. Why would they do this? But there, were, the there were better ones. The nightmare of the Culling's efforts to survive just keeps getting worse. Oh. <laughs> I mean... I'm going to show yeah, you I'm... why I think they're doing this. Oh, by the way, there is I should mention, there is a free trial if you want to check it out. One day. One day. Yeah. So, one match, presumably. Right? I mean, you only get one match a day, so... Yay. Yay. <laughs> I'm going to show you why I think they're doing this. And I think it's really sleazy. This is the Xbox page, the Xbox Store game page for the calling. Okay. Notice that they have the free trial. Notice that they have a buy now button for five ninety nine. Notice they have a little description of the game. Uh-huh. They tell you that there is in app purchases, that you cannot click on that or anything. Down below. We see that it's available on the Xbox One. It is live multiplayer 2 through 16, co-op 2. And then you would think there's a huge description of the game. Okay, So you would think there'd be a lot of information in here as far as what they're doing. There is none. Arena Battle Royale, Game Show, then there's you, Personal Airdrops, Environmental Hazards, Weapon Traps, Stims, Perks, Progression... Which is just talking about winning one match, but nobody goes goes home a loser. Uh, player's choice, winning's the goal, but how is up to you. Multiple arenas, survival island, call county correctional, lie or live the show. These are just a few. For full details of the status of the game, how you can give feedback, blah blah blah. Screenshots, trailers. People also like. Ha! That's funny. <laughs> people also like. Darwin Project. (laughs) (laughs) Here's some info. Who does it? Release date. It still has the 2017 release date. uh, And even its reviews are from the previous builds. There is nothing on this page. Nothing about this payment model, gang. Nothing. This shop screen would have you believe 
that you, oh, hey, the calling, Origins, oh, they're going back to what I liked, cool, yeah, I'll give them six bucks. Mm. Nothing about what's happening inside the game as far as the monetization goes. Q, that's sleazy as fuck. Definitely not cool. I mean, I, I guess legally it's fine because it does say that there's in-game purchases, but... I, I would want to kind of know that before I got involved, you know, through because I could throw six dollars at another game yeah. <laughs> if yeah. I know that this is going on in this game. And Jason, oh. even if you have known nothing about this game, you've never mm -hmm. heard of it. You see it come up on your Xbox store because you play a lot of battle royales, right? And it happens to get into your featured or recommended section because you play, you know, Fortnite and you play this and you play this and you play this. And you're like, oh, cool. A new one. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like the description. Six bucks. Oh, hell, if it sucks, I'm out six bucks. M no, that's not what's going to happen here. You're going to get one match. And sorry, I don't know if you can really tell. I'm sick. It's just going to milk six dollars over and over. I'm right now just checking real quick to see what the refund policy is on the Xbox on the Microsoft store. So, <laughs> well, they, they're going to can do refunds, but I don't know if it's like no, the two hour thing that they have on I'm going to I'm going to tell you what what they're doing there. If you buy this, I bet you can look up their policy because I don't know it off the top of my head. I bet their workaround for we're not going to give you a refund is Q. You should have downloaded the trial first. You should have downloaded our one-day trial first. It says right. there's a one-day trial on here. You should have downloaded that first, and if you didn't like it, don't buy it. One-day, uh, one-game trial. Honestly, depending on what the <laughs> policy was, Jason, I feel like that might be the only reason there's a trial there. Yeah, it could be. Now, f forget the whole $6 if you owned the game previously on the Xbox. By the way, we got to be specific on the Xbox, uh, because you'll be, you know, grandfathered in, you know, to this whole thing. That's fine. But you're still going to be playing by the same rules. One match per day. I mean, this this is absolutely disgusting. Please, people, do not buy this. Do not buy this. If you like the calling, that's fine. It, it wasn't for me, but I'm generally not into BRs to begin with. So it was already a, la a step behind as far as my interest level. This is not a commentary on the quality of the game. This is not a commentary for me on my opinions of the game, the gameplay, or anything like that. I don't know enough to speak intelligently about that topic. This model is atrocious. This model is a travesty. It should never have been attempted. Please don't feed it money personal opinion are my own not anybody else's but i have a feeling many of you are going to agree <laughs> <laughs> all right finishing up before we go on to the bumps some things we thought maybe you should know about and check out starting with q a bank giving us a free to play game it's a game of you know obviously there's a real developer but the publisher for this game is the uh national westminster bank of the uk and they just decided hey we'll make this game free and it's it, it presents itself as kind of like an eco-friendly game you're out there saving islands and rescuing these critters called bankables which are <laughs> like little piggy bank animals apparently and i i when you get further into the description, it basically, it has, like, banking-oriented stuff. I, I, you know, so it's kind of quasi-educational -edu banking stuff. Uh, and that's that's the point of the game. Hilariously, I was looking at it earlier on the Switch, and it already has a, um, a, a, a some DLC for like six bucks. That's dinosaurs. Yeah, we got we got it here on Steam too. Dinosaur <laughs> Island for five bucks. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it just randomly came across my thing, and I was like, okay, that's weird. <laughs> a group of amazing islands needs your help. Horrid plastic waste has washed up, and you need to sort it out with your trusty trash blaster. But look out for the litter bugs. They love mess, and they're out, Jason. To muck things up. I'm going to muck them up. 38 positive reviews. Yeah, 92%. Who knew? 
But yeah, <laughs> so a bank was investing in it and then decided, eh, fuck it, make it all free to play. So there you go. If you want to check it out, check it out. Uh, for those of you more in the MMO side of things, if you've been playing SWOTOR, Jason, uh, they're going to be adding Swoop Racing. It's actually live on the PTS. is coming in the next update. So something else you can do that I don't know how many people are left in SWOTOR, but uh, <laughs> something else you'll be able to do, and it doesn't require voice acting. Enough to do Swoop Races, I guess. Enough people for that, I guess. I think they already had, but they just had to, they just added the the rally event. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to offer daily missions on Dantooine, Tatooine. Uh, sorry, I got to switch the shots there. Uh, and Onderon, uh, Swoop Racing in the original. It's just like Swoop Racing in the original Kotor, run by gangs scouting out the best racers, stuff like that. So I, hey, that's cool. Something new and neat in Star Wars: The Old Republic. Uh, finally, last piece that you should know about, there is not going to be any TennoCon this year, we already know about that, not a TennoCon that's live, uh, Digital Extremes will be doing a digital TennoCon, they have announced their packs and their charity partners, so there are three different packs you could buy if you want to attend the virtual TennoCon, one is 25 USD, that's a bunch of in-game cosmetics, uh, there's a bunch of real-world co- uh, items, a T-shirt, a pin, stuff like that, in a bundle for $34.99, and then a bundle for $54.99 USD that contains both the in-game goodies and the real-world goodies. And the charities uh, named for this year's event are the Autism Ontario London and L- the Alzheimer's Society London and Middlesex. Uh, so Digital Extreme's still doing their thing. Hoping that you will attend to the extreme that TennoCon has always funded their charities. We hope that this one does just as well, being stuck in the digital-only format. Uh, So, check it out on our website. There are links to those packs. Go ahead, Jason. I know it's just a charity, and and I I should be older than this, but I just love there's a place called Middlesex. (sighs) You really should move to Pennsylvania, then. Uh, Yeah, go to Intercourse, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and there's also blue balls. Um, yeah, all the little areas around Intercourse PA have clever double entendre names like that. Hey, I saw, I saw Harry Balls in my Guild Wars Two stream. In your Guild Wars Two stream, and on that Friend balls, you used to live on Gay in Congress. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, let's do the weekly bombs. Not to be confused with the weekly balls. Uh, go ahead, Jason. <laughs> Actually, you need to go before me because I'm going to play off yours a little bit. Oh, do I still have to give the same one? No, no, you yeah, you keep yours. Keep yours. I keep. I can keep my original. Okay. Yes. Because apparently I stepped on Jason's toes without knowing it. Uh, mine is always in the show notes first. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to give a da bomb to Amazon Game Studio and Crucible finally updating their Steam page. They also launched a bunch of hero reveal videos. If you want to go check out some of that Crucible stuff, it is available on mmobomb.com. Because now the damn thing looks like a proper Steam page and has information about the game and able to you're able to see information about the heroes in the game. I'm so glad that they did this six days before what is essentially their soft release. So I got to give them a dub bomb for rectifying that situation, even though I still think they should have done it a lot earlier. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah. So my dub bomb is to uh, what is it? Nibla Games, which. Mike sent me the email from this company. They're making a new CCG. I've got an article going up pretty soon about it called uh, Cause of of Voices of the Dusk. It looks pretty interesting. It looks kind of a stylish little free-to-play CCG. But I particularly want to bring this up because the email that was sent to me, apparently from their CEO, has a ton of information. has lots of information about the game. Give us some keys or something if we want to try it out too. They got a link to their uh, press page. So all sorts of stuff. And I'm just like, this is some, it's, they're all based out of Chile, out of Valparaiso, Chile. And I'm like, these people who, you know, not to demean them or anything, but they're probably not a big company. They probably don't have hundreds of people and a billion dollar budget. They produced better PR materials than Amazon did for, for their game that they've been working on for years and have whatever kind of budget for. So, <laughs> major the bomb to Nibla Games for putting out a really good press email for us to look at and get information from. Q, I know that's like one of your biggest pet peeves is when we get shitty press releases from anybody. Because I'm like, how much 
tell people about your game if you're not telling me about your game. Yep. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Q. Uh, so I'm going to give a, a gentle a bomb to the Epic Game Store for uh, apparently not realizing that people would really, really want to download Grand Theft Auto V for free. To be honest, the game's been out since 2013, so I, I honestly would have figured that everybody that wants the game has it by now, but apparently that is not the case. And yeah. their store's been down half the freaking day. It's so funny that you say that. I would have thought the same thing too, and it may be what Epic was thinking. Hey, this is a really cool free release, but most people have this, you know, it'll just... So my son, one of my sons came downstairs earlier today, and this was all happening, right? The Epic, you know, couldn't even log into mm -hmm. Fortnite and shit. And he was like, oh, did you see what the Epic Game Store? I said, yeah, Q's writing it up right now. And, uh, and he said, oh, I want to go get it. And I was like, we have Grand Theft Auto V. And, and he was like, yeah, but Michael has it, his older brother, Michael has it on the on his computer. Uh, the copy you and I have been playing uh, is we have it both on PlayStation. So now I can grab this and play with him. So there must be a lot of that type mm -hmm. of stuff. Like people, oh, sweet. I bought it on the PlayStation because I was playing with friends. I'm not going to rebuy it on the PS or on the PC. Oh, wait, now it's free on the PC. Go grab it. So kind of makes sense. But yeah, I think definitely a lot bigger than they thought that one was going to be. The store is still down. I just tried to get to their website. And is it's it still the 403? 403? 403, yeah, yep. it was a 500 earlier and then wow. it was 403 right before the show. Yeah, this is like so six or seven hours after they did started the announcement. So yeah, it's still... Uh... Well, you got a week. So... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, from the viewers, Carito PT says, uh, Da Bomb Magic Man for showing us all his collector stuff on stream, brought back memories, and Da Bomb to Final Fantasy XIV for having me lose myself in it again. Yeah, if you want to check it out, um, we not only do streaming at twitch.tv slash MMOBomb Monday through Friday at 2 Eastern, we're always playing some free to play game there, uh, Jason or myself. Uh, Q, you're welcome to take a day if you want to. Um, when the when internet, to be able to yeah, play a game. when the internet, when the internet soon, gets done soon, here, soon, soon, um, soon, TM. <laughs> but I've been streaming in the evenings on my own channel, twitch.tv forward slash magic man, M-A-G-I-C-K-M-A-N-N. Jason's been doing some streaming, uh, in, again, in the evenings on his personal channel. Check that out too, twitch.tv forward slash Jason Winter. His is significantly easier to remember, uh, than mine, uh, because yeah, he's just, he's branded himself. I am Jason. Winter. I used to have. I used to use a different name, but then someone didn't know who I was, and I actually changed it. So ah, but yeah. So there was some stuff on the shelf that the viewers were asking me about. So I brought like ten different boxes down here, was showing people like the old Star Wars Galaxies uh, retail boxes and everything like that. So it was a good time. Uh, all are welcome. Please uh, give them all follows and, uh, and join us whenever you can. Jason, go ahead. Uh, loincloth, I please. That's says, that's cool. That's like loincloth, except like in the Hercules vein or uh, <laughs> Achilles. I got the vein. loincloth right, but Loin, I might have messed up the rest of it. So. Loinclothocles. Loincloth oh, yeah, is that what you think that, it is? It's like the Roman. I was reading, I, I was oh, reading okay. it like a Roman or a Greek warrior. Loinclothocles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's that's a new name. So congrats, welcome to the stream or the show, whatever. Uh, says I'm looking forward to Crucible. I like the character design a lot so far. And the gameplay looks fun, but yeah, they really could have done more on advertising and promotion. Yep. You know, last week when we did this, when we were doing this, we were talking about how terrible it was. I was just about ready to say this game's just DOA. It, it's not doing anything. I feel more positive towards it certainly in the last week, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Based like they were like I almost wonder if they made it so bad to start that they decided they said okay we're gonna do that. Then we'll make everybody think it's great just by doing bare minimum stuff. You know? <laughs> so now here I am, like, yeah, I kind of this game looks kind of all right. Maybe I'll actually play it a little bit. So. Well, in six days we'll be able to get our hands on it and take a look. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Q. Alan M. I, I know those are zeros, but I want to pronounce it Moo. <laughs> That's probably what he's going for. Uh, love your shows. Would you please turn Q down to match you and Jason? I he 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 normally like does volume checks on us, so I don't know yeah. what the deal is. Yeah, I don't know what it was either last week. Apologies. It should be uh, much more balanced this week. Uh, let me know in the comments, Alan. Uh, question of the week last week. Do you play clicker or AFK type games at all? If so, what device? And if not, why? Guestly says yes and no. And I've tried. Let me explain. Yes, I tend to check app stores when I'm bored and check random games and what they offer. 
No, none of those games have stuck with me. Never played them for more than a day or two. I have tried. Brother called me to play Shop Titans when it was on mobile only like four months ago. Played a few weeks, got bored pretty fast, and went to go check the app store on its emulator on PC because my opinions have not changed. These games damage your phone battery when you have to keep that game open constantly for long periods of time. That is a, a really big concern with these types of games too. Mm -hmm. Particularly the AFK, or not so much the clicker because you are actively doing something anyway. But the AFK type games, you know, I have a buddy that when we play Final Fantasy TCG, uh, like in person, um, he's his phone is always sitting there running some AFK or fantasy game where they're beating his characters are beating up dragons. The numbers of on damage and levels are just massively huge, popping on the screen uh, yeah. to the point where he has a backup battery. That oh okay, my phone's dead. You know, puts the backup battery on it, you know, the charger on it, and just lets it sit there and play. I'm like, what is the point of playing it to that extent as an AFKer? Like, okay, I'm going to go away. I'm having a hard time beating this boss. I'm going to put these things on farm and gain some levels while I'm gone. Okay, at least I maybe I could see that, but literally, I have never seen him play this game besides to hit resume or next battle or anything like that. I, I don't know. I don't get it. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, Breckner Catalan says, question of the week, I do play some stamina energy-based mobile games on my PC via emulators. I don't own a smartphone. Those screens are just too tiny to use for gaming. It's like my fingers cover half the screen. That sounds, yeah, I mean, that sounds like a Jason and Mike old man complaint. Well, it used to be worse. Like I compare my current phone to my, my old iPhone, and it's like, yeah, the screen for the iPhone is like this. At least the current one is more like this, so it's a yeah. little better, but yeah. Go ahead, Q. I check them out, but like Quinn, I still play I play them till I hit a wall. I play them once a day, do things that have stacked up and moved on. Now that I think about it, I'm just doing dailies from WoW and another game. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> That's all, that's and that's all what is, they, man. and that's what they want you to do. I mean, there's a presentation yeah. that is, you know, was leaked on the internet a while ago, um, and Jim Starling, you know, did a whole episode on that thing. It's the you make it a habit, you know, the the, the multiple steps of turning it into something you know about, something you play, something you do, and then habit. Um, I, I complained about daily quests in a blog article like five or six years ago. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Forecast says, question of the week, I've never been one for idle games or clickers, but I do like the occasional gotcha game or a well-put-together simplistic mobile title like BitLife Simulator. Recently, I've been playing Disney Sorcerer's Arena. It's got horrible monetization, but the simple turn-based combat with Disney characters is so much fun. I see the appeal of simple games on mobile devices as there's something I typically do while watching Netflix, etc. However, there's a fine line between simplistic and boring, and it can be tricky to get it right. Also, a bomb to Legends of Runeterra for restoring my faith in online TCGs. It's absolutely banging. <clears throat> Excuse me, I haven't played that in a while, actually. Now that I think about it. So, Ryan, thank you for the, the uh, feedback and the reply there. Question of the week this week, and I think i got to put a little context around this one. I've been playing a lot, personally, of Elder Scrolls Online, and an issue that I saw in that game got me to wonder what you two and the viewers think about this. Should a game's in-game cash shop mark or flag items that are available in-game for players? Why or why not? So I'm talking about, like, here's a chest of mad magic, right? Here, here's a, you know, a chest piece in the store for five bucks. Should there be a flag or some type of marker notifying you that, Jason, hey, just so you know, this can be obtained in game. You, you don't have to spend the five dollars. You could obtain this in game. Um, I'd be interested to know your two cho your two uh, opinions on this. The reason I ask this is Elder Scrolls Online just recently, I think yesterday or today, in the cash shop, put the cure for vampirism or werewolf in uh, their featured section, and it was 800 crowns. That's about seven to eight dollars USD, depending on how you buy crowns. The problem with that is Pretty that- Pretty cheap for a cure for vampirism. Right, true, oh. true, but not as cheap as it is in game. <laughs> you can get the cures for both of those by going to a particular place in the world and spending like 200 gold, which context, 200 gold, you will make three or four times that in selling the trash from one dungeon run. 
200 gold is nothing. You will accidentally get it by doing two quests in the game. But the problem is, if you're a new player, right, and you see Greymore coming out, which is making changes to vampirism and werewolf to the point where players might want to cure it now and not use it for certain uh, builds, you just see that feature, you're like, oh, sweet, fine, cool, I can cure that and get rid of it. Or new players that don't take a few minutes to Google things like that. And I know I put a lot of context around this, but I do want the question itself to be pretty broad. If something in a cash shop is available in-game, should there be some type of flag to let the consumer know, this is not the only way to obtain this? You know, you can get this in-game. Particularly, this one felt real slimy to me. Because it was trying to grab seven or eight bucks off of something that is really stupid, simple, and cheap to do in-game. You just got to Google or ask somebody, and, and you'll be fine. So, I'll be interested to get your two takes. the Elder Scrolls Online cash shop? No. <laughs> Their cash shop's awful. But I, I wasn't even talking about in-game. I'm talking, you know, I've had centuries of eternal torment, you know, being forced to be a creature of the night and everything, but for eight bucks, I can cure my vampirism. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that, yeah. That's a great deal. It yeah. is. It's a bargain. So, we'll get everybody's take on it uh, on future shows here. Just, But that's your question of the week. Should things in an in-game cash shop be marked or flagged if they're available to obtain in-game for players? Why? Or why not? If you think, hey, you know, that that's a stupid tax. It, you didn't take five minutes to Google something? A fool and their money soon parted. Maybe that's the way you think about it. Let us know why in the comments below. While you're there, don't forget to give us your weekly bombs. Dub bomb for something good, A bomb for something bad in the world of gaming. Just your general thoughts or a question for the panel. We'll be sure to put it on next week's show. Until then, Q, where can everybody find you? Q, you, you, you're like, the beginning of your sentences are cutting out. Are you on voice activate by any chance? Um, possibly. Ah, all right. That's what it is. Well, she's hanging out on Twitter at Quinlan. There, there we go. That's what we're saying. Like, it wasn't bad until, like, the last three things you said. It was, it was really weird. It was fine. <laughs> oh, it's probably that. just my internet. It's probably just the hotspot. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Jason, how about you, sir? I'm on Twitter at Winter Informal, streaming at twitch.tv slash Jason Winter. Which is I'm, easy to remember. It is easy to remember. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there personally on uh, Twitter at MagicMan1. That's M-A-G-I-C-K-M-A-N-N-1. -N on Twitch, however, take the one away. It's just twitch.tv forward slash MagicMan. We'll be streaming some more Elder Scrolls online. Until next time, gang, make sure you're following MMO Bomb on Twitter. That's at MMO Bomb so we can tweet at you all the latest articles, giveaways, interviews, first look videos, free to play cast, free to play weekly, and so much more. Until then, stay safe, and we'll see you on the servers.